Hello, I am Neeraj Kumar. In this part of the tutorial, I will try to explain about different quantum gates. These quantum gates are very important and useful in developing the quantum circuits, which are the part of quantum deep learning architecture. Without going through those gates, it is not possible to construct the quantum deep learning architecture. So, this is also a very essential. So, in this tutorial, I will cover some very basic and useful gates actually required in constructing the quantum deep learning architecture. So, like Hadamard gate, C0 gate, X gate, Z gate, Y gate, I gate. So, we will consider those five uh, six gates. So, let us go through one by one. So, the first one is Hadamard gate. So, Hadamard gate actually creates the superposition. I had already explained in the starting video what is the superposition, quantum superposition. So, when you want such kind of quantum superpositions related things in your circuit, then you have to use the Hadamard gate. So, Hadamard gate is actually represented by sign H and you can see that this is the Hadamard gate matrix. So, how it creates the superpositions? So, it will clear from the very simple example. Suppose we use one qubit zero and pass it through the Hadamard gate. So, let us see what happens. So, in the previous discussion regarding bit and qubit related tutorial, I had explained that we represent zero as a vector one zero. We know that this is the Hadamard matrix. So, to get that, what we will do, we will take that Hadamard matrix 1, 1, 1, minus 1 and then multiply it with, the, with this state vector 1, 0. So, one, uh, when we multiply, we get the output like this. Here, when we multiply this by this, then we will get output 1. When we multiply this, we get the output 1. So, if output is 1 is at the starting place, means it represents the 0. If we replace it 1 at here, then it will be 1 at this place. So, here we can say that it is a combination of 0 state vector and one state vector with same coefficients means the system is it in superposition state. The same thing will happen when we pass 1. Maybe sign you can get for plus minus it doesn't matter but you will get in the superposition state. Now you may ask questions that okay instead of uh, one bit if we pass something which are already in superposition state like alpha 1 0 plus alpha 2 1 suppose this is already in superposition state and we pass it through Hadamard gate so what will happen surprisingly it will generate another superposition output but may be different in nature. So, to understand this, we will convert or identify the state vector. So, in earlier tutorial, I had explained like how to calculate the state vector. So, I am directly using that information. So, it will be the state vector for this. You know the Hadamard matrix. So, to calculate, what you do, you will just multiply your with what you will get so when we will multiply here we will get like this alpha 1 plus alpha 2 and when we multiply this by this we will get alpha 1 minus alpha 2 sorry alpha 1 minus alpha 2 so this means here we have multiple one. So
So like here we did, what we will do, we will say that we got another qubit state like this. You can simplify it. You will get something like this. Suppose we simplify it for alpha 1. So, and the another you will get. So, you can assume that, you can see that, you get another superposition vector. Now, as I discussed, all the, most of the quantum gates are reversible in nature. So, what it means? It means like, when you, suppose here we apply one qubit, apply one Hadamard gate, again apply another Hadamard gate, then you will get the same output. So, it is not beneficial. But, in case of single Hadamard gate, you will get superposition state. If you use the superposition state, you will get another superposition state. So, such kind of uh, computations, you can apply in your circuit and you can think uh, creatively in designing the circuit. The next part is C0 gate. So, the C0 gate sample is like this. When we pass qubit A and qubit B, qubit A is the control, known as control qubit and qubit B is the target qubit. So, when we apply C0 gate on target qubit with respect to control qubit, then we will get the C0 gate output and the upper part, we will just get the same output. So, we can use this information in designing a lot of things like uh, suppose you want to design uh, uh, aggregations or uh, non-linearity in non-neural network architecture, you can leave this or you can leave this with some other operations also, you can use only this. So it will reduce the information, you can achieve uh, some non-linearity non with some other combinations you can get uh, uh, convolution operations, you can get pulling operations also through the same different different arrangement of C node gates with other gates. So that's why it is very useful. Actually, C naught gate is known as to create the achieve the entanglement. So actual entanglement you actually achieve through C naught gate only. Now let us see that how C naught gate actually works. Here we have a truth table regarding C naught gate. You have identified that. This is the control part, like a control unit. Uh, like control bit and this is target, uh, sorry, this is control bit, entire 4 qubits are, and these are target qubit. So when we apply the C0 gate, when the control input gate state is 0, you will see that there is no change in the target gate output and it will represent the same output. But when we see the control qubit state is 1, it just flipped the output of target qubit states like 0 to 1, 1 to 0, like this. Uh, we pass this to C0 bit. What should happen? It should generate the output like 1, 1. But how? And when we represent this in a form of similar circuit, then how you, we will do that? This is a control qubit, this is a target qubit. So, 
we will have this kind of system. Here you will get the same output, but here you will get the output like this. So this is a symbol of C0 gate. Now let us try. For that, what we will do, we already discussed like for two bit operations, we can use the binary combinations like this and for one hot encoding we can write one zero as zero zero one zero so this is our state vector now what we do we take the c dot matrix it is one zero 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 We multiply this matrix with this state vector 0, 0, 1, 0. Now let us see what happens. So when we multiply this, this part will be 0. Again, this part will also be 0. We multiply this part will also be 0. But in this part, this second second will multiply. So this is the output. So here this output means if this is our one hot vector kind of output, then it represents this number. This means it will represent. So you got this. Now, other important thing is the C0 gate, like other quantum gate, it is also irreversible. Sorry, it is reversible. Like if you apply another C0 after this, you will get the same output again. So I think it will clear that uh, what is the main concept behind the C0 gate. Now I will discuss about X gate. So X gate is known also known as bit flip gate or poly X gate. So you can see that in this truth table, when we supply a qubit 0, it flipped to 1. When we supply 1, it flipped to 0. So this is X gate truth table. Now let us discuss about X gate. Actually, X gate is also known as bit flip gate or poly X gate. So when you pass from the truth table, it is clear that when you pass the qubit 0, it will return qubit 1. When you pass qubit 1, it will return qubit 0. And this is the matrix of X gate. So you can test that if we pass 0, it should represent, it should convert it into, this is very simple to check. This is a state vector for this, vector for this. And uh, when you take this matrix, like 0, 1, 1, 0, multiply it with 1, 0 you will get 0, 1 as output. This represents this. Now, the next is Z gate. So, Z gate is also known as phase gate or it generally results in rotation of 180 degree on the Z axis on the broad sphere. You can understand the Z gate through two table that if we provide the input 0, qubit input 0, it will result, it will return the qubit input 0 as output. When we provide qubit input 1, it flipped to minus 1 because of rotations of 180 degree on Z axis on blood square. It is very easy to test it. What you have to do, like uh, suppose we pass take 1 and we pass it through Z gate. then it should be so just uh, easy to test this is the vector representation for z gate it is like 1 0 0 minus 1 
when you multiply it with uh, this state, you will get 0 minus 1. This means minus y gate. Now discuss about y gate. Actually, y gate results in the rotation of 180 degree uh, on y axis in dodge square and it is actually the combinations of x gate and z gate. Here you can see that if we just take it outside then it will be uh, like uh, 0, 1, minus 1, 0. This is like just flip of this z gate. So once you flip this z gate, you will get apply this here, you will get the same thing here. So how it works? When we pass something, for example, 0 with y gate, we generally say it a poly y gate also. So what should it return? It should return 1 like this, state 1. So when we take its state output like this and this state output, then this operation will be equivalent to 0 i minus i 0 multiply it with 1 0 you will get the output zero and i this will be equivalent to zero one and this is equivalent to this so very simple to understand Similarly, the last uh, one that I wanted to explain about that is I gate. I gate is just identity gate. Means you pass 0, it will give 0, 1, it will give 1. So, no need to explain. So, till here, we have completed the explanation of gates. Now, we will directly use those gates in our circuit design. And I will try to explain that how we can design our circuits.